this little hose here, that goes to a very unique feature that's on Voyager. And that is, the, and I'm just going to say it right here. Oh, um, you're not. I, Don't you know, bring it up. I'm, I'm Don't sorry. Call. You're going to get the haters. I'm, I'm, I you're know. Gonna get the I know. Haters. People are going to come out, but I've, I've got to do it because we're, we're going down that path. How's it going? Let's come on up and uh, check out Voyager. Voyager, the 2016 Volvo 780. On the inside, for the most part, it's just like a regular uh, commercial truck that you see on the road. We've had a few uh, options. We bought it new and uh, added a few things, uh, uh, heated seats, uh, massage uh, seats, and they call them back cyclers. And uh, the interior that uh, we chose uh, was specific to 2016 model. Uh, they only ran it for a couple of years. A uh, reverse camera uh, to see where we're going or where we've been, depending on uh, which direction uh, we happen to be going. And then let me give you a little uh, tour on the inside and just kind of see what we've uh, done and what we have. But really, a lot of Voyager, the special features are outside. So we'll get the inside done first and then we'll check out the outside. But lots of cabinets. Uh, we've got uh, a TV here and lots of room, uh, a sink that is tied into our tank, refrigerator, that's where Sandra puts all our yummy food when we uh, travel during the day. And freezer for ice cream. <laughs> yes. And then behind here where the TV is the microwave. Right now it's set up for travel. <laughs> Closet, coats, Sandra's parka. And then we've used this only when we're camping. Only when we're camping. There's a little porta potty underneath there. So if we were in really bad traffic jam or when we're camping, then we use that. It's a cassette toilet and we can pull it out and then dump it in the appropriate fashion. And then here, one of the reasons that we really enjoyed the Volvo was the layout of the interior and the dinette here. This will fold down to basically my bed. Sandra sleeps up top. Oh yeah. There is, uh, to get up there, there is a ladder that comes down like that. And, but the, the biggest selling part for us that we really liked about this model uh, was the dinette here. So we'll be traveling around lunchtime, uh, we'll get hungry, we'll stop at a rest area, and we will pull out our lunch, and whether it's sandwiches or whether it's a hot meal that uh, gets warmed up in the microwave, we'll sit, have some lunch, enjoy. The cab is nice and cool because we've been traveling, or warm. Uh, depending on the temperature outside. And then when we're done, we put everything away, clean it up in the sink, off we go. We don't have to get into Orion, and it makes it for a nice smooth uh, day. That's kind of the inside very quickly, but let's check the outside and see what modifications we've made to make Voyager a nice asset for boondocking. Oh yeah. So we had the bed built. Uh, obviously Volvo didn't uh, make this for us. Uh, this is a gentleman out of Texas and I think our bed was probably the last one that he built. Uh, the last thing he told me when I handed him the check was, David, I don't know if I'm doing another bed. 
and he used to do uh, quite a few of these. I would say probably a hundred or so smart beds. Um, but ours was special, of course. Uh, a couple of the nice features about Voyager, a nice big drum box uh, that we can uh, store bikes, we can store a tent, uh, our inflatable kayak, all kinds of other things, which uh, is really nice uh, to have when we're uh, out and about. Uh, another unique feature that we had him build for us was a compartment specific to uh, the generator. So the generator is on a sliding tray and I'll take this cover off. I've got a, a cord here and then up in there it's kind of hard to see but there is a electrical outlet and I'll plug the generator in. Uh, it's, this is designed so it can uh, close and then I will plug the truck in to that outlet and plug it into the shore power, cab power outlet here. Run the cord along and we have generator uh, power uh, without an actual APU. Uh, 2000 watt Honda. I can close this uh, door and it vents on the uh, inside. Nice and quiet. Much quieter than an APU. And if we need to, we could plug Orion in there as well. We could. Matter of fact, we went to Alaska, what, six years ago. We just about ran for the whole summer off that 2000 watt mm -hmm. Honda. Uh, so that was really nice. And as David said, what's really nice is because it's encased and closed, it's locked, so we don't have to worry about people taking it and it's also secured from the elements. Exactly, so if it's raining, snowing, then it's secure in there. We better not be camping at this <laughs> I'm in trouble if we are. Yes, you are. Underneath the bed, we've got the water tank. So it's a 60 gallon poly tank installed between the frame rails. I've uh, plumbed it out so it's a gravity feed uh, when I want to discharge it and uh, pump it into Voyager. And it works great. It's protected from the elements. No one can see it. And it's making use of great dead space uh, underneath the truck bed. The other part of Voyager that is really cool, not only does it carry water, the good stuff, but it also carries gray and black the not so good stuff. Uh, I have a flow jet macerator pump and that tank right there that you see right there is a 60 gallon black gray tank. This is the hose that fills it up and I'll hook up my flow jet macerator pump to Orion and I will pump that into this tank, 60 gallons worth, and off we go to dump. That way uh, the workhorse is Voyager. We don't have to move Orion. And then to dump it, it's pretty simple. It's just a regular uh, sewer line, gravity fed, and we will pull that and dump away. Makes it really convenient when we're uh, boondocking and don't have to move Orion and we can just take this to get water and to dump our uh, black and gray. So that's worked out great. Actually, the 60 gallons water tank is about, what, five loads of laundry for you? Oh, at least, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this ends up being sort of the laundry mule, I will say. <laughs> so some people have commented and asked us if we got another truck. Uh, this is the same truck that we started off with. But on some of the previous videos, we've shown a picture and an actual clips of a truck that looks exactly like Voyager, but it only has one axle. Well, this is the same truck. We haven't owned any other truck. This is it. Uh, and when it came off the factory floor, we, we purchased this new from Volvo, and we were actually the first, and I don't know if we're the only ones, non-commercial 
uh, entity, I'll say, that we're able to tour the Volvo factory. Um, I had to sweet talk some people to get us in there. It's really cool. It was a very good tour. You were a very good sweet talk. <laughs> <laughs> it came off the factory floor, uh, two frame rails. It was actually that hitch and this drive tires. And that was it. Well, that lasted about three years. When we upgraded to Orion and had Spacecraft Builder, she came in a little heftier than what we were planning. So much so that we were gonna be several thousand pounds over weight. So we had to do something. It was either get another truck or it was add an axle. And by the way, we only had about a month and a half notice. Yes, well, we're not getting another truck. So we had a company in Kansas City that lengthened the frame four feet and added or a tag axle. And that gave us the weight capacity then to handle Orion. Uh, so uh, 13,000 pounds on the pin, 42,000 pounds total weight. We also needed to keep the original uh, commercial plate uh, hitch because there is no hitch on the market for RVs that can even approach 10,000 pound pin weight and legally. Uh, so this and that's will handle our dry pin weight. Yeah, yeah. So regular is 13,000 pounds. So this bad boy will handle up to about 55,000 pounds. So I think we're covered. So the original bed was this height all the way back and thus gave us more storage, gave us some storage options up here. Uh, when we went to the pin for Orion, uh, we had to drop the bed for the pin placement. So once again, Heron had never done this before. Uh, he had never done a drop deck uh, that uh, took a smart car bed, dropped it to a commercial hitch height, and then still kept boxes for storage, uh, the waste tank underneath, and a commercial plate uh, for the hitch. And the water. Uh, and the water and underneath the, the smart bed. And the generator. He had yeah, never done that before, did a great job. He it's did awesome. Extremely sturdy, really nice bed. And while we're back here, uh, a couple of access doors that uh, he also installed allowed us to uh, get into the lights some of the electrical and the air lines and such. Oh, uh, I which, see an extra little sewer hose down there. Which you need, uh, yes, and a sewer hose. For so you got wet storage. Yes. He knows how OCD we are. This was really cute. He added another door. Oh, you've got more stuff in there. Yeah, I've got <laughs> so, <laughs> my discharge hose. <laughs> so it's symmetrical. Wasn't that nice of him to think of that? That was very nice. Yes. So not a requirement by law, not a requirement, um, the DOT by any stretch of the imagination. But after doing some research way back when, in 2015, when we uh, got Voyager, uh, I had read where this right here on the side of the truck was probably a good idea. Like I said, not a requirement. Uh, so we had it uh, put on there, uh, there at the dealership. And I will say we have, eight years we've never been pulled over stopped by DOT because of our size or length even in California even in California now we've had questions about how do you get the smart off the car or what kind of a trailer is that or things of that nature I've never seen a bed like this what's going on with this whole setup but uh, they have never ever questioned us as to are we commercial or not and that's really the biggest issue you're going to have with an HDT is that potential of being commercial. Uh, this on the side of the truck that we had placed there, I think that's uh, answered the questions of a lot of officers out there. We've had a few that have pulled up along us on the interstate and just kind of looked and then backed off a tad and then just kept on going. Yeah. So were they looking at the smart car? Probably. Uh, did they look at this writing? It's possible. But what I know is that we've not been pulled over. We're out of Texas, every state is different, but a lot of states have a similar kind of requirement, but they'll call it something different. Uh, Texas, because this is a private truck, it's not an RV, 
We've licensed this as a private truck, registered title. So in Texas, you need, for this uh, truck, you need a Class A non-commercial endorsement on your license. And what that required was getting with a DMV for Texas in our area where we were and setting up a road test and a written test. Uh, we took both and actually they wanted the road test with the whole rig hooked up. Uh, took a road test, uh, we passed. Thank goodness Woo! I didn't have to back in. <laughs> Just had to and go around the block. Took a written test. It was 16 questions, I think, mm -hmm. which was based out of a couple chapters of the CDL book. And uh, we got our uh, Class uh, A non-commercial endorsement. Mm -hmm. So that's what's required for Texas. Like I said, every state's a little different. For instance, South Dakota, no requirements. Alabama, no requirements. So anyhow, those are just some different states, but check with your own state to see what you actually need. So I hope you liked the tour of Voyager. Uh, in a week or two, we've got another tour with the infrastructure of Orion. So that'll be for everyone that wanted to see under the skirt, under the table, uh, in the basement, uh, and not all the frou-frou stuff where we actually live on top. Uh, getting into the nuts and the bolts. So that'll be out in a couple of weeks. So hope you enjoyed this one, and that one will be a lot of fun as well. I hope you subscribe, click on the notify uh, button. We'll get more of these coming out uh, every week. But thank you very much uh, for watching, and appreciate you checking us out on the channel. The only way I'm allowed to look over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true statement. It's not my hair dryer. <laughs> no, but you'd like to have this. It's pretty powerful. You should see him put together something from Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to build a water transfer pump. I'm going to do something really cool. I'm going <laughs> to try to wire up a switch. <laughs> so here's the pump. You got to start somewhere. So I'm going to start with the, that item with which I am the most <laughs> unsure of, and that is the electrical side. So the pump's connected. The pump is secure in the uh, case. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect the uh, hoses. Woo! Yay! Woo!